Mathur and I Revathi Nanda students of MBA in hospital and healthcare management Symbiosis Institute of Health Sciences will be your host for the first session of this final day of Sim Health 2023 we begin our session on health leadership and workforce management leadership is not about being in charge it is about taking care of those in your charge health systems are complex and constantly evolving and the capacities needed by health managers and leaders to respond to current and emerging issues are limited contemporary challenges and emerging needs of the global health management workforce are focused on efficiency saving change and human resource management with this i would like to introduce the eminent speaker for the session Dr Sanjeev K Singh medical director at Amrita School of Medicine Kochi sir we welcome you on to the stage <laughs> sir has been the regional coordinator of world health organization india and improvement advisor at the institute of healthcare improvement us He has also been a faculty at Indian Institute of Management Kolkata and at IIM Bangalore. He is an ambassador from the India to Society of Healthcare Epidemiology of America. So is a member of Drug Safety Council Government of India and member at National Advisory Body on Occupational Exposures Healthcare Without Harm. Sir, I now invite you onto the dais to share your insights on healthcare leadership and workforce management. good morning i am not sanjeev singh i am rajiv but sorry for that interlude um what i wanted to generally is customary they invite me to come and felicitate the speaker but one thing which he the obviously the compares would not be knowing which i would like to acknowledge and uh, appreciate in public here's this gentleman who lost his father just a few days back but see the commitment he could have easily sent us a mail saying that i cannot come and there can be no loss greater than one's own parents loss but he stood up to his commitment and he said rajiv i was i told you that i'm coming and therefore i'm here today so i really appreciate that sir and i would request all of you to clap because it's rare to find this commitment and uh, you know dedication to a cause when he had committed so thank you very much appreciate all yours Thank you so much, uh, Symbiosis, uh, Dr. Rajiv, and the whole team. Uh, Dr. Sangram uh, had been in very close touch. I reached very early this morning, and uh, you will know that I am exhausted as I speak. But uh, I am amazed with the vibrations of Symbiosis, and amazed at the facility which the, the, they have built. It's really. Uh, a true facility which is dedicated to the nation and i think uh, there's a lot to learn from such a fantastic organization so <clears throat> yesterday night i was taking a flight from delhi and uh, as it really happens there was a beautiful girl sitting next to me <laughs> and i got excited and i said uh, ma'am can we talk and as it really happens the lady said yes <laughs> and i am sanjeev singh i am uh, rajput and we belong to warrior class so i wanted to sound intelligent because generally our brains are, is below the knee and you will know as i speak also <laughs> so i said can we talk on nuclear disarmament so she got very excited and she said fantastic but can you answer me few questions and then we'll get to nuclear disarmament if goat eats grass the outputs are pellets if cow eats grass output is cow dung if horse eats grass output is a big fibrous material when input is same why output is different and sanjeev singh kept pondering pondering and pondering and said i don't know she said when we cannot talk of shit why to talk of nuclear disarmament <laughs> leadership belongs to that category every human being who's born and who has bit of gray cells 
think he is the greatest gift to mankind and he is a great leader. And there is a two school of thought. One considers this as a shit and second considers it as a nuclear disarmament, unable to achieve. There are few people who do it. I am good to work at a spinal level. So let's see whether we can get across to a <coughs> few things. That's my institution, sorry. So that's my institution. This is a 2,600 bed recently started, which has a medical nursing and a dental and research and assimilation center. We also have an institution in Kochi, which is uh, in Hindu mythology, we offer a flower to the goddess and we, we think uh, the patient who comes is God and that is the flower shaped unique architecture of the hospital in Kochi. And this is the agenda which I'm going to talk about. So I just wanted to raise this question to all of you. <clears throat> have you met any leader in your life? Anybody? Anything rings bell in your mind? And who is that? Other than your teacher, other than your mother. <laughs> so there are multiple leaders. We, we need to be open to this suggestion. And that is where leadership is considered to be utopian, and it is not. <clears throat> so it is a very VUCA world. It is a very volatile world, very uncertain world, very, un, very confused world. And we live in that madness, and we want to find a method within that madness. And within this, we have a friction, we have confusion, we have so much of things which are going on. And that is why we want leadership. We want a person to take a step back and strategize and correct few things so that there is a positive environment when we, when we work. But what is the problem? The problem is we belong to we had four Vedas and we thought karma philosophy is the best philosophy. So we, from a spinal level, keep working. So leadership has a TLT. So they have too little time because they have always thought working and being busy is the best way to communicate to myself and to the world that I am doing great job. I have interviewed a lot of people who come <coughs> when we started this facility we have interviewed close to 4,000, 5,000 fantastic faculty from US, UK, and across our country. And I interview a few of the medical, uh, sorry, hospital management students also. And most of them, I say, why have you chosen hospital management? Most of them will say two things. Job opportunity is good, and they see power. And that is an unfortunate way to get in into a management cycle where you are seeing this as a powerful and that is why you want to get into. But the middle portion is extremely important. You have to be people's person and you have to connect with the rest of the world to be able to make a difference. Otherwise, you are get, those powers are not available. You get into mediocrity. So most of us are into mediocrity from front end to AMS, DMS. We are not excellent because we have not understood why we are into management. <clears throat> so this is one of my most precious moment when Mata Amritanand Mai, my guru, uh, was there inaugurating this uh, facility at Faridabad. Uh, Prime Minister Modi, I'm a great fan of uh, this uh, charismatic statesman, he was there. And two of the very senior disciple, uh, direct disciples of Mata Amritanand Mai were there. And I, as a medical director, was taking, uh, I was starting my journey and I was explaining the whole model to one chosen person in the country. But while this was happening, my mother was not there for my most chosen journey, moment in my life, because she passed away 28 years back. When this, my most precious moment was happening, my father was not there. He has progressive Alzheimer's and he doesn't recognize me for the last 12 years and unfortunately, the nice soul passed away. 
My wife was not there because unfortunately she is a fantastic anesthetist, but she's suffering from a lot of health problems and is on bed for last four years. My son was not there because he's doing his masters in California. My most precious moment was only mine and I was nobody, had nobody to share though I conducted that program. What I'm trying to drive is, it is now. The power of anything is now. Leadership, if you have to do, you start it now. If you love somebody, say it now. If you want to make a change, do it now. If you want, if you are happy, share it now. We are sharing for one moment, and that moment doesn't exist, because when everything will be set right, we'll do that. It is, it doesn't exist. I just wanted to, I love to share stories and I'm going to share more stories because that is where I connect with people. She's my beautiful wife. She was doing her post-graduation in anesthesia and had a biliary sludge. <clears throat> so we took her to, we were there in Jaipur uh, doing post-graduation, so we took her uh, ERCP and anterior retrograde cholangiopancreatogram was done. One of the nicest gastroenterologists entered into ampulla of waiter, uh, gave a dye, went into a pancreatic drug, and created pancreatitis. So she has an hemorrhagic necrotizing pancreatitis. She had a pericardial pleural effusion during that time. She had multiple paracolic abscesses, so much so that she was operated and the, her abdomen could not be closed, so she had a burst abdomen. She also had a multidrug resistance at that point of time, that was in 1998 and uh, there was nothing existing and we were searching for that drug which could save her. She had multiple additions, she has multiple additions right now so she cannot just eat properly. It was six months of hospitalization and two near-death experience. But what I'm going to drive is we have, she had pain on day one and the gastroenterologist said ki jhoot bol rahi hai. The person who created a problem had that insensitive attitude to the patient. And that is where I'm trying to drive. If we have to become leader, not a good clinical person, I'm talking about you have to good, be a good clinical, you have to have ethics in your blood. So is, am I giving enough opportunity for patient autonomy? Am I asking them, is there a harm versus benefit is there a justice in whatever I do? So if I am unable, I go for rounds, I go, the whole group goes for a round, and they just look at the patient and say, Ki, Aaj rakh lete hain. And the damage you are going to do is the patient who is going to come to the ER will not get into critical care because you just said, Ki, Aaj isko ICU mein rakh lete hain. and that's unethical because that's not justice. So it is, medical ethics is such a razor's edge that if we are sensitive, we need to work like that on a day-to-day -day basis. So the happiness of our life depends on quality of thoughts and the leader has to have brilliant thoughts. Even if you are depressed, even if you are anxious in your moment, a leader has to take a breath, has to take deep breaths has to take a step away and have to plan because he has to take 12,000 people working in your institution together. How do you do that? Your time should be utilized well and you should be cheerful. Then when you drop from the life tree, you drop like a ripe fruit. It's difficult, but that's how you also become leader. So how do I start? <clears throat> it starts from self-awareness. What are my positives and what are my negatives? And that is where I should spend my 40% of my time. Because unfortunately, when I go for a satsang and I hear that this is how people used to, has to behave, I immediately think, why Gupta ji is not behaving like that? Why Mishra ji has done like this? And why Arora Saab doesn't understand this? But I don't understand that I also don't understand. And that is the huge problem. And that is where Leadership is a big vacuum. We have fantastic, talented people. So self-awareness, reflection, because we don't give time when you're, we are so engaged that even we, we are having tea, the thoughts are going on. 
we cannot enjoy a good cup of tea because we are so cluttered that we don't reflect and then there is no leadership and then there is a regulation. So what we need to do is to unlearn first. We have so much of knowledge, it is powerful information, but it, it is of no use. So how do I start? There are 10 commandments that people are illogical, self-centered, but love them anyway. They are. Unfortunately, we are looking at this Nadia Komenchi, 10 out of 10 in everybody. There is no 10 out of 10 available at all. If they were, they would have been divine, supreme, and they merged with uh, uh, the wholesome Atma. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish. Do good anyway. Because we are always asking for what is in there for me. Ask because I, my, my eyes work, my hands work, my mind works. Let me just give it back to the society. If you are successful, you win false friend and true enemy, succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. Unfortunately, in most of the meetings, when we, when we also conduct an head of department meeting, the head of department would love to be silent. They don't speak up. One, because we have not created a culture. Second, they find it very easy. If you speak up, the, the problem is yours and maybe the solution I don't have, but then I become a bad sore in the management side. The biggest people with the biggest ideas can shut down by the littlest, uh, lit littlest of the problem, but think big anyway, and that is lacking. We are fantastic copycats. Because X has bought 320 slice CT, I should also have it. There is something called as master health checkup. You have heard about that? Executive comprehensive health checkup. Now, in Cochrane Library, in a scientific review which you do, there is no science behind master health checkup. Every hospital has it. Why? Possibly it makes money. People favor underdogs but follow only top dogs, but favor the underdogs anyway. Can we be for the lesser advantaged people? But let's come to the neuroscience. There is this portion which is important because we have to have those chemicals which is there. In. So we only complain because change is pain, behaviorism doesn't work, humanism is overrated, you're talking about some other different world. But can we raise a self-esteem of everybody who gets in touch with us? And that is important, get people on board. And that is difficult because you need to invest time. And there is where that your brain cells, your synapses, your motor neurons should work to get people on board as much as possible. Now what happens with this? There is something called as quantum Zeno effect. I was speaking to my neurologist, my head of department neurologist, and I asked him, when husband and wife fight, why husband don't remember the fight and wife doesn't forget any moment. <laughs> and he said, it is a chemical locha at amygdala complex, don't get there. <laughs> Basal ganglia, amygdala, and prefrontal cortex, three most powerful organs which are there. And that is where we need to do that exercise of reflection and improving. How do we do that? We need to have <clears throat> the mental act of focusing attention. We have lost focus. Post-COVID, we are seeing kids, I'm a pediatrician, so we are seeing kids who have huge attention deficit disorders because the time they have spent on mobiles and this, uh, on the, uh, the laptops and the iPads, is so immense that there is no attention and the ADHD has been a huge problem. So how do I improve? How do I become a good leader, strengthening my basal ganglia, amygdala, and pref uh, prefrontal cortex is focus attention. We say, unfortunately, meditation and yoga was all ours. Rest of the world is practicing. And we say, ha ha, ye toh hai. So focus attention is extremely important. Internal change is extremely, understand the environment 
लाइक स्वामी चिन्मय आनंद यूज टू से परिस्थिति मत बदलो मनस्थिति को बदलो Unfortunately, we are trying to change all in the environment. We are not changing ourselves, and that is where that internal change has to happen. The greatest concentration on specific ideas or mental experience, the attention density has to be extremely high. So, what do I do as a good leader? I need to build strategic thinking. I have to have a plan. I cannot just go today and again take rounds in a pediatric ICU. एंड से आज हमने एम आर आई कराया है देख लेते हैं हमने एंटीबायोटिक चेंज किया अड़तालीस घंटे देख लेते हैं वॉट वी जनरली डू इज लर्न गिविंग होप बट वी डोंट प्लान वट डू आई डू सिक्स मंथ फ्रॉम नाउ वन ईयर फ्रॉम नाउ वट डू आई हैव प्लान फॉर थ्री ईयर्स फ्रॉम नाउ फॉर माई डिपार्टमेंट एंड कैन आई हैव अ लॉन्गिट्यूडनल फॉलो अप एंड कंटिन्यू ऑफ केयर सो आई नीड टू आस्क स्ट्रैटेजिक क्वेश्चन बट who is allowing us to ask questions and that is the culture which we need to build there is a three letter word which is called as why extremely important whatever is done please ask why because the meaningfulness and the purposefulness has to come when we know why i am here similarly observe and reflect and embrace trainings which was which is going to be important so let's tell some stories this is this gentleman we did a first hand transplant on the left hand side who's manu and afghan soldier on the right hand side now manu was going to udupi mogambika temple and he was coming back home he saw a few eve teasers uh, molest they were molesting a girl who was there in the same berth and he tried to protect he was thrown out of the train and he lost both of his hands and he was extremely depressed and he uh, we we do home health and we saw this guy who was brilliant very active passionate now got depressed with this and nothing was possible so we looked at this option we spoke to our plastic surgery and reconstructive department they said that uh, hands from the cadaver is very very difficult they convinced 10 20 50 people one got ready we transplanted bilateral hand to uh, in him he was so passionate that all gross motor sensory skills got back and then he went back into the village and again doing nothing so we brought him back and said that can you be our transplant coordinator because he was so passionate then he got married he has kids now why i am telling this it is important that there has to be a you cannot just do or care one person and feel that you are superb there needs to be a continuity to be able to make that difference and similar thing happened with uh, with with this afghan soldier so that those are important so one we always want to be first now we see both first in Mah first in india we have got this machine which is first in maharashtra we have got this machine which is first in central maharashtra we have got this machine which is first in pune we have got this machine which is first in central pune we have got this machine first in so we unfortunately is in the first mover advantage drive but then there are great men who have done fantastic work and leaders have to be innovator they have to think differently and those people who james watt eli whitney michael faraday they have been superb thinkers and that is where the great ideas have to come in to be able to make that difference so how do you do that getting new ideas networking and nexus is what is important and that is where you make good leaders so penicillin story is what is taught in harvard business school it was a chance finding he just went on a vacation he was growing staph aureus there was a fungus growth and staph aureus was getting killed and that was a chance finding but then that that whole thing Uh, brought in an idea of uh, antibiotic which was not available and post cremanian war they had 40 vials and they saved life but then it ended at 40 vials until howard flory came in and said can we make it big why we are saving only 40 lives and that is where they they brought in that whole team so your just brilliant idea doesn't work and that is what leadership is all about you have to create a network you have to create a nexus and you have to think big and that is how they thought big they
put in a plant, 40 vials became <coughs> 400 vials, 4, 400,000 vials, 8 billion, 8, 4 billion, and now penicillin and the penicillin families are making so much of difference that they're saving lives. So what, as a leader, we need to do is to innovate and create networks. We have seen this with, sorry, we have seen this with Uber flagship. Change the way we think. So that is important because those value propositions of affordable price came in, channel partners came in with Uber. What was important is that the key partners, it wasn't just 10 taxi people, there were at least 3,000 taxi people who came into that network. Key resources were linked, the revenue streams with surge pricing and otherwise, everybody got an opportunity to work and earn. And that is where a leadership brings in a brilliant idea and then they create a huge network where everybody benefits. And similar thing happened with Airbnb. Superb idea. Everybody always uh, were uh, getting into hotels, but then can your beautiful house be converted into a stay place? Superb idea. And then it all works on feedbacks. Because if my feedback is 4.5 and 5, my next Airbnb customer comes in. <coughs> Netflix. Changing the way, if, I'm sure every mobile today has a Netflix downloaded, and you are investing a lot of time in that before you go to sleep. But change the idea of just going to the theater, and that is where I think the leadership has to come in. So this is a good, good slide. What do I do? The strategic thinking in healthcare is we need to work on digital health pace. So whether it is nano robot, 3D printing, handheld ultrasound, ingested sensors, implantable sensors, virtual reality, this is the future. The next big future is precision. And I'm glad that a lot of work which is happening at Symbiosis and uh, my friend is doing fantastic work in the molecular uh, biology, so exp exposome, microbiome, epigenome, all this whole genome, epigenetics is the, is the future. And then the big data. <clears throat> because if I need to just do hospital management, health systems management, where do I excel? Or I'll be always a mediocre, and that is where it is, it is important. So economics is also key, because we cannot just cost drives decision making. Now, for leaders, the data should drive the decision making. So earlier there was a cobalt therapy, then there was a linear accelerator, and then there was a cyber knife. That was a robotic arm. So you will get excited seeing a cyber knife because it's a robotic arm, it works, it moves with your respiration, and you will always like to buy it. But if you do a systematic review, 30 crore machine, 20 crore of human resource, if you look at 70% local control with cyber knife, which is so recent, so advanced with a robotic arm, and 36,000 rupees per dose, Whereas in linear accelerator, 10 crore of machine, 20, 20 CR of my maintenance, but local control, the impact of the precision medicine of radiation dose, 90%. Older machine. So that is where everybody gets excited with anything new which has come in, but it may not be helpful. So that is one point which I wanted to drive. Second is there is a cost to quality. Unfortunately, we say we do this and patient lives get saved. Non-impressed, I'm not, not impressed. I need to get converted everything which I do in a rupee term. So if I have an infection, I have a cost of avoidance, I have an indirect cost, I have an additional cost, I have an opportunity cost, and my saving is close to 84,000. So just doing hand hygiene in one particular department, I am saving close to two crores of rupees. My investment is $1 in training of hand hygiene. My return of investment is $236. And then there is a cost of bad will and litigation with everything which gets associated with this. So that is, again, extremely important. So there are various leadership styles, which I'll skip. There needs to be a transformation, transactional, servant, democratic, autocratic, and Liz Ferrari. <clears throat> we see part of, in our prime minister, both democratic and more of autocratic style of function, which is possibly what would be required. But what is also important is get data. Leadership can only become good leader provided you are not fed for with stories and uh, uh, very spicy information, but can we work based on data 
and there are many dashboards, and it is good to have a predictive model. So what if I am earning close to 10 CR today and my revenue per operating bid is 46,000, what do I do three months from now? What would be prediction? So where I'm going to invest? Should I invest in epileptic surgery or should I invest in diagnostics of more precision medicine? So predictive revenue analysis is important. So that's about leadership. Now I'll quickly go to the health workforce. There are these three group of people who are available. One is a faculty, nursing staff, and support staff. And this is <clears throat> the status today. We have close to 12 lakh people. There are two, two lakh uh, dental surgeons. There are Ayush people. We we'll forget about government taking very rash decisions, which is different. And then there are many, many ANMs and things like that. Now, by population, if you see, we are not doing too good. We are ranked 90th still because we, don't, we are not filling that gap, which is important as per the WHO. India needs approximately 1.37 million nursing staff, but we don't have. So right now, we are 1 million short of doctors, 2 million short of nursing staff, 3 million short of uh, allied health forces, and what do we do? It's, 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 and then I think institute like Symbiosis is making a huge contribution to the nation by providing that kind of a workforce. You have a medical school and you have a, a fantastic allied health sciences school. And that's the gap which is there for the doctors. <clears throat> so if you look at how, do, how is India shaping for a 2047 agenda, because that's the agenda which the government of India has set in and they have a plan. Right now it looks pretty bad. The demand and supply gap, the demand is 5.8 and supply is 3.1. But the, with institutions like Symbiosis and many such institutions would contribute and by 2047 we would be uh, at a very, very good pace. And that is where I think there is a lot of positivity, a lot of work which is happening and a lot of allied health sciences people who are getting ready. So with the School of Medicine, there are 612 schools. So I'm not very fond of this uh, decision which has been taken by Honorable Prime Minister of every district having a medical college. The employability of the engineering, engineers today because of the engineers which they have, engineering colleges they have produced, is five engineers get employed in 1,000 capacity. And the same thing is going to happen with the doctors, unfortunately, because we have, we don't create. We have created 29 All India Institute of Medical Sciences, unfortunately, no faculty. <clears throat> so I'm not sure, but then some of the guidance comes from WHO because of uh, the filling in the gap based on population. And the irrational or inappropriate distribution within the country is again a, a huge problem. So most of it would exist because uh, uh, Yogi Adityanath ji has decided every district hospital will get converted. Not a brilliant idea. They again have taken a decision that uh, medical council inspection will only happen in first year, third year, and seventh. Uh, fifth year, not a great idea because we know how medical colleges are in the country. School of Nursing, <clears throat> there are close to uh, 9,000 schools uh, within the country and they are doing fantastic job. At least uh, in the southern part, most of the schools are just phenomenal. The training is superb and the compassionate care along with the evidence-based care which they provide is very, very good. But the, the, the gap is uh, huge and the work is, uh, work is happening. Allied Health Sciences is where the contribution needs to be there because there is a very trained faculty. Unfortunately, what happens is a doctor gets into an MBBS, gets into an MD, gets into a DM, and then also takes a fellowship. The support which he gets from Allied, the BSc nursing is there for three years, and then they migrate and shift, and they are replaced by fresh BSc nursing staff. So there is a frustration because of this gap which exists, and in, uh, including the allied health sciences. So respiratory therapist, if I go within an intensive care round, the respiratory therapist, the, the clinical pharmacist, the, the, those trainings are, have to be really at a very top-notch level to be meeting the expectations of those who have done DM, they have done fellowship, and then they want to give very specialized care. And that's how the distribution is. <clears throat> so those are the top 2047 agenda. That's what the government is driving. One is that there needs to be a framework. There is a lot of upskilling which is happening. There is monetization in the educational infrastructure, which is uh, a great idea. 
There is an incentivization <coughs> with, uh, in the whole plan. There are digital university because if you have to really get into all the districts, there needs to be a digitalization of the whole program and you need to unlock a lot of uh, potential which is, which is still untapped. So that's the framework which uh, the healthcare committee has given. There is an empowered group, there is a setting up of national professional registry, the Allied Health Sciences Council will also come in and that would be extremely helpful. <clears throat> so these are some of the points which are there for uh, developing those treatment guidelines which are important to build that workforce and uh, educational institutes, there are innovative partnership programs, both national and international, which are, which are happening. <clears throat> So finally, I'll come to this. Uh, the recommendations are plenty, but uh, there were this husband and wife who were not feeling well. The husband was not feeling well. The wife took that uh, husband to see a doctor. So the doctor saw and asked wife to do few things and your husband will be okay. Don't give him dirty looks for next one year and he will be okay. Don't ask for jewelry and diamonds for next one year and he will be okay. Don't discuss your mother-in-law for next one year and he'll be okay. Don't discuss sister-in-law, daughter-in-law serial which comes at 9 p.m. on the TV with him and he'll be okay. So both of them were going back home. The husband asked, uh, what did the doctor say? The wife said, you're not going to survive for long. <laughs> if we have to survive, we have to become great leaders and there are ample opportunities which I just shared. And if we have to survive, we have to create institutions like symbiosis which will make an impactful difference. Thank you so much for your listening. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your knowledge and expertise on healthcare leadership and workforce management, the neuroscience of leadership, strategic thinking, and a plethora of real life examples that you shared with us today were truly inspiring and captivating. Can we have a huge round of applause for the speaker, please? Now, I would request Dr. Rajiv Yadavadekar, Provost, Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences, Symbiosis International University, to felicitate Dr. Sanjeev K. Singh. Thank you, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the session. Now, let's move forward to the next session on startups in healthcare by Mr. Mudit Dandwati.